Hi everybody, this is Dennis from the Dennis and Andy Show and I'm going to be doing a full review of White Savior, issue number one from Dark Horse Comics. It's a four issue miniseries, $3.99 cover. Um, I was asked to uh, read this through and do the review, so I will always try and get caught up and do that. Um, Eric Nguyen and Scott Berman uh, wrote it and the art is by Eric Nguyen. And um, Mika Myers does the lettering, and, and I kind of mention Mika because, you know, lettering is kind of uh, neat in here. So this starts off talking about um, the prophecy told by the outsiders. And it's talked about the white savior who comes to save, you know, everybody and, you know, how a man of, of the pale skin would come in. And, um, and... As the story goes, he arrives and he gets cut down immediately with all the arrows. He's dead? The Savior's dead? Oh no, why did we listen to that crazy white guy? We're all doomed. Run. So then we cut to today where you see Grandfather talking to uh, his son and uh, or his, his grandson and trying to Tell him the old story once and for for all. And uh, Grandpa, I, I teach film history. I'm not really a, a, a real history teacher. Ah, but the story of the Enoki is universal. So he's like, look, look, this is just a story that's been passed down um, through the ages. So this is how we get introduced to Todd Parker. Todd gets named by his parents because they want him to fit in um, and to be, you know, he was like, I, I really need a white name so to fit in. So Todd Parker is what they what they named him. So he's uh, on his bike and there's a girl um, that looks like she's getting mugged by a few guys. And of course, Todd decides he's going to step in and help. He jumps off the bike, winds up whacking him with his uh, helmet, and saves the girl. And he goes, did you see that? I totally kicked those guys' butts. I must go. I'll be late. Wait, let me help you. No, thank you. And she just takes off running. And then he's like, hey, wait a minute. And his wallet's gone. He realizes that she stole his wallet. And she's taken off with the guys that he just hit. So he's telling his buddy, uh, Neil, about this. And he gets laughed at. Basically like, oh my God, I can't believe that happens. And he goes, I don't even know what she looked like. She could be anyone. A teacher, deadly assassin, leader of a drug cartel. Wait, is that her right over there? I mean, what really, what are the odds? Um, hey you, I know you stole my wallet. Uh, no, speak English. Uh... So anyway, he confronts her and stuff like that. She goes taking off. She's running, and he goes to pursue it. So he's running after he wants his wallet back, and he jumps over, and all of a sudden he leaps, and something happens. Boop! He somehow goes through uh, a portal, and uh, in this portal he winds up being back in feudal Japan, the battle of blood and stuff. Um, so in here we, we get, uh, it says editorial note, the story is entirely fictional, therefore this man is actually a relative of George Takai. So, or George Takai. That's kind of funny. Um, uh, my balls, I landed on my balls. You can see him falling in the air. So he's in a lot of pain and he winds up teleporting, crashing into the cart, um, winds up coming up and he's in the middle of the battle or well, wait it's the great white uh savior and and did he just become the great white savior oh don't die don't die everything everybody look out for everything hey what do you know i i didn't die you know all those things were in him what is that stay calm it's just a paper cut and he goes just a tiny bit of blood oozing out from my body just for the record, I'm not passing out, just taking a little cat nap. And uh, he gets back in there. He goes, ah, I've seen you finally awoken. Where am I exactly? Finish your bath and I will tell you. Uh, this whole women bathing thing with me. 
So he basically uh, goes through and they have a very nice conversation. He fills them in um, about what's going on. And he realizes he is back actually in feudal Japan. And, uh, he, hey, you listen to me, good. The Savior wants real food and I'm sick of this noodle and rice stuff. Uh, give me some utensils. These aren't it. So that's the one that Grandpa was, was telling him about. He goes, the Savior is very unique. Oh, you're freaking kidding me. You're all freaking kidding me, basically. So, you know, one thing is you can see there's definite distinct art styles in his. When he gets to feudal Japan, the lines, everything's a little bit uh, uh, different. Um, and, if, you know, if we look when in America, it's a lot lighter. Um, even ever the way everything is drawn. There are some really cool parts in here where, like I said, I like the lettering and there was some really cool fonts and stuff when you're dealing with that. I really enjoyed that, so that's kind of why I pointed her out. Um, overall, I thought the artwork was was really, really good. Um, I, enjoyed, I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, the story the dialogue i understand where they're where they're trying to go with it or where you know he's trying to go with it um and i think they may have spent a little too much time trying to just talk about you know todd um todd parker i mean you do want backstory you do want all that um they really tried some funny jokes in there and some of them landed some of them didn't um it is meant to be satirical and it it does in some parts you know accomplish that there are other times i didn't think it it did it could be we all have a different type of a, a sense of humor i enjoyed the concept i think it's it's kind of cool you know the storyline where you know about this story and, and all of a sudden you're there. You know, that's always a fun thing to do. How would you handle it? What are you going to do that's different? Or are you just going to interact with the environment? So it's fun. Um, I'm going to give this one a CGC rating of a 7.0. I think it was a good first issue. I don't think it was a phenomenal first issue. But, this is the big but. I think what they've set up for is this could be a really fun story. So I'm definitely going to pick up number two. I want to see where they go with this. I think this is going to be fun. And it's only a four-issue miniseries. So I'm crossing my fingers that um, we're going to get a lot more explained. Um, like I said, a few things that I would have liked to have seen a little different, but overall, it's a solid first issue. So anyway, you guys may agree or completely disagree with me. Either way, feel free to leave your comments down below. I like to hear your thoughts on it. Um, and as always, just check out uh, my channel. Uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Hopefully this is the time where you're going to subscribe. You can do the quick flips where I do my little 60 second shorts to show you guys new books. I'll do my full reviews like this one where we go into depth. We do movie and TV show reviews. Um, we do uh, interviews with comic book artists and writers. We help people launch their campaigns. Um, there's just a lot of great stuff out there. So join us in, in at the DNA, uh, the Dennis and Andy show. We're all about the nerd stuff. So anyway, role-playing games and stuff. Join us and uh, we will talk to you all real soon.